Okay, hi there guys. Welcome back to our fifth tutorial about our library management system. So, in the last tutorial, um, we worked on the um, staff, uh, staff table. We performed load and edit and uh, remove operation. And today we are going to work on displaying staff information using data grid view. Uh, we will not use the designer, which means we will have to do some work. Okay, so um, for this, <coughs> um, if you remember, uh, the data grid view requires uh, a binding source, and the binding source should specify a data table um, in order to display the information. Uh, okay, so this means we have to do a number of things. Uh, one, we need to uh, load information information from DB, okay, and two, we need to put the information in a data table, okay, and three, we need to uh, create a binding source. Four, we need to link. The binding source with the table and finally we need to set the uh, data source of data creative view to the uh, binding source so these five operations uh, they're not very difficult to do we are going to do them now okay so I'm um, gonna remove these let's go to our code <coughs> And since this operation will be needed uh, in many uh, in many classes and uh, requires database connectivity and stuff, it makes sense to put uh, this operation in the database management system class. Okay, so let's go here and uh, now <coughs> this function is used to um, what should I say here to full the data grid view oops with uh, data okay so public function full data grid view with data so uh, what we need to specify here is SQL this is the SQL statement a string and uh, param array bj okay <coughs> oops as object okay so um, this function is going to be a simple one um, we receive a SQL statement and a m number of parameters and we are going to work on that and this function sorry re should return boolean else boolean okay so it's going to return boolean try okay so uh, before I do anything here in the exception part I'm going to say there is an error so in that case uh, dot rollback and uh, Oops, also I need to specify another thing which is the data grid view. Data grid view. So here DQV dot and we are gonna modify the data source. So data source equal nothing. Return false. There we go. <coughs> so here first create a data adapter okay so dimension um, DMP data adapter as new um, okay data oops okay so I need to remember yeah it's this one let's see this is the name of space got the uh, right mm -hmm. oops 
what was it? <coughs> SQL Server CE. Yeah. Data dot. Uh, SQL Server CE. SQL Server CE. Dot. Um, SQL Server, yeah. oh, this one. There you go. So SQL Server C data adapter. Okay, I had to write these before. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, what we need to specify here is two things. We need to specify the command text. In this case, it's the uh, SQL command here, and we need to specify what uh, the connection, uh, the connection string. Uh, wait a second. So I'm gonna specify the command text. Uh, wait a second. It doesn't recognize it. Sorry. Let me do this manually. Uh, sorry, without a constructor. I mean, not when it's already manually. TMP data adapter dot. Um, um, let's see. So here connection. Hmm. The second one it doesn't. Da, 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 da. I haven't worked on this for a very long time, so. Da, 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 da. Okay, which means I have to work on the constructor. Sorry about that. Sorry, so. The select command, and this is gonna be supplied using the SQL. Sorry. Okay. So uh, what I was doing here is the command, as you can see here, the command should be uh, a SQL CE command. So I need to create the command object. So instead of this, create the command object. Dimension TMPCMD as new system data dot SQL server CE dot SQL CE command. There we go. <coughs> and tmpcmd dot uh, command text equals SQL tmpcmd dot. Uh, what do we have also? We have command text. We have uh, connection. Call me dot. Uh, or is it connection object? So here. We did, uh, we set the SQL the connection and also what we need to do is to add the parameters right so um, dimension i as integer for i equals zero to uh, <coughs> uh, what's that what's the name of the array here obj right I need to change this name um, cmd obj or a more meaningful name um SQL params okay SQL params is a better name so SQL params dot count minus one so TMP CMD dot <coughs> what's gonna happen here is uh, parameters add with value and what I need to add here is what uh, this is gonna be um, at and i this is the parameter number and uh, SQL params of i there we go so um, this part creates the command uh, this is gonna create the data adapter and we should pass the TMP command we created earlier TMP CMD okay so now we create the command after creating the uh, command sorry after creating the adapter um next full the data table and so <coughs> the MP data adapter dot full and uh, if you see here <coughs> you can see that one of uh, the methods is used to full a data table so now we need a data table so here dimension 
mp data table um, yeah, as a new uh, data table. There we go. And I'm going to pass this here. Okay, so now we fill the data table. Next, create a binding source. Dimension TMP binding source as a new binding source. So TMP binding source dot uh, data source equals in that case. This is going to be what? This is going to be TMP data table. Now everything is ready. We have our binding source uh, pointing to our data table, and data table was filled using the data adapter. Uh, we just need to do one thing um, display the info and in this case this is going to be what? this is going to be data grid view dot uh, data source equal tmp binding source that's it and um, I guess we need to destroy the data adapter destroy data adapter so what do we have to do is uh, TMP data adapter dot dispose and also TMP CMD dot dispose. I think, uh, mm, yeah, I'm not sure if I need these two. Anyway, regardless of that, I'm gonna return true, which means everything worked well. So, <coughs> this should work well. Now we need to test it. Okay, so um, how we are gonna test that? Well, it's gonna be easy. Um, these are tables. Let's have a look at this. Uh, let me see what do we have in the bars. Okay, nothing here. Regardless, regardless, uh, we can still test it even though it's empty. So, um, let's go to our testing project. Okay, and now. Yes, the zero eight <coughs> um, full data grid view. Okay, <coughs> sorry. Okay, so now um, dimension TMP DGB as a new date data grid view. There we go. Next, uh, if uh, what do we have? We have uh, obj dot and obj is the database management system object uh, full data grid view with data now this is gonna be tmpdgb and next is gonna be select star from bars okay and uh, that's all then um, list box one dot items dot add test zero eight okay else list box two dot items dot add test zero eight failed there we go <coughs> uh, it is as simple as that and um, okay this is it let's run this code and go and uh, it seems it's working um, we haven't seen anything yet on the screen but uh, let's go now and uh, we could add a few other other um, things here to make it uh, a little bit better um, we could for example <laughs> okay One of the things you will notice that when you fill a data grid view, um, the original column names will be displayed. You will not have labels. Okay, so uh, what are we gonna do? Um, we are gonna create another method. <coughs> uh, sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
uh, we are going to create another method to replace the headers <coughs> well uh, maybe later maybe later okay so let's go back to our progress da, 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 da. now this one's finished okay so we still have lots to to do so um, next we are gonna work on the staff login so let me pause this for a second okay so continuing our work now uh, we're gonna work on the login part okay so um, the login part um, should be straightforward what we have here is uh, the following we have the login name employee name and password so what you want to ha to happen is that you want to supply the uh, login name and password and the system will tell you if everything is fine okay so since this ones have to do with the staff we will have to go to the staff class and we're gonna add another method now uh, this is the thing about this uh, new method this method has nothing to do with a specific user it's uh, in other words um, you can think about it like this uh, when a user enters a username and password the system doesn't know which object to load until he gets the user maybe the username is invalid the password is in invalid so what we want to do is create some kind of a general function that will get these information and create the object for you okay so check what uh, to for this to make sense let, uh, I'm gonna write the code and then you s uh, I think you'll understand what I am saying here so this function is used to <coughs> check user login okay so public now this function is going to be shared function and what that means is that the function doesn't require an object to be created for it to work uh, okay so login oops login and this is going to be what the mp login name now string and what we have the mp password as what <coughs> and the it's going to return what is going to return a staff class okay uh, oh this should be a function I'm sorry I forgot to say this is a function <coughs> and this should be a string a string there we go <coughs> I'm sorry so now we're gonna do this. Um, if any kind of uh, oh, oops, we have what DBMS or oh, oops DBMS as DBMS class because we are accessing the database. So first of all, if any kind of error happens, we are gonna do what? We're gonna say DBMS dot rollback and return nothing in this case okay which means some kind of error happened doesn't return anything so there's some kind of error otherwise uh, we're gonna work on this now so dimension as a string oops and now um, s equals dbms dot create result set create result set there we go Okay, there's gonna be what? Select star from um, staff where employee login name equal at zero and employee password equal at one. Okay, so we're gonna specify the employee login name and password, and in this case it's gonna be MP login name and the mp password okay next f dbms dot read and check out in the file if there is some kind of information there then in that case dimension um, wait a second i'm gonna say dimension tmp as uh, what this is gonna be staff class this is gonna be new staff class and finally, f dot 
load from db mm -hmm. and this is going to be dbms followed by emp login name in that case return tmp else return nothing uh, there's something here wait a second so um, I need to cl close the uh, record set here so dbms close result set s otherwise dbms dot close set here s and if nothing happens here dp uh, close result set s and return nothing okay so this function is going to perform a login um, let's have a look on it the first thing we are going to do here we are going to create a result set okay and uh, this result set is very simple we are going to filter up the table based on login name and the employee name it's as simple as that next we are going to check uh, and see if there is a record if the username and password are correct we are definitely going to get a record uh, if not the select statement will return nothing and so it is gonna it's not gonna execute this part and so uh, the results that will be closed and we're gonna get a nothing this is the first scenario now if we have a record this is what's gonna happen we are gonna create an object for the staff member okay uh, and then we are gonna load that object from database using the login name being specified and we're gonna return that object uh, if any kind of error happens during the load of the object we are gonna also close the result set and return nothing to indicate that there is an error okay that's as simple as that so now um, <coughs> let's try to use this let's save that and let's go to where is it this is our test <coughs> sorry so here test zero nine um, staff login. So for this to work, um, I need to check some information I entered before, right? So what do we have? Uh, where is it? So login name we have. Uh, Smith and the password is one two three, right? So, the mission uh, TMP staff equals. Now check how I'm gonna work on that. This is gonna be what staff class. Uh, wait a minute. It's gonna be library management system dot staff class. Now. Instead of creating the object, I'm gonna use the dot, and you can see that there is a, this function login now. And I haven't created the object, but this function, since it's shared, is gonna appear uh, by calling the class name right away. Okay, it's, it's a shared function among all objects and all other modules in your code. So we're gonna pass the database management system object, and we are gonna pass the username in this case it's gonna be smith and the password one two three okay and if everything is fine we should get the object so if the mp staff is not nothing then this means our test worked <coughs> so list gosh list box one dot items dot add test zero nine okay else is going to be list box 2 dot items dot add test 0 9 failed okay it's as simple as this so save that run the code and go oh it failed so let's see what did we do wrong I'm gonna put breakpoint here run and go <coughs> now uh, F11. You can see we didn't create an object. It's, it's executing here, and uh, this is employee name. Okay. 
oh, it seems that the, I, the information I supplied was wrong. Okay, so I, I have to check the test code, right? So let's have a look at the beginning of the code. Where is it? So we have what? We have Smith. Oh, we have John Smith. Right? Wait. The login name is Smith. John Smith. Load Smith from the database. Oh, it's the. Later on, I update the name and make it Smith too. And this is why I'm getting the error, right? And then I'm destroying this object. So. Uh, Smith doesn't exist at all. Hmm. Okay. So now I'm gonna do. In that case, I'm gonna create a temporary um, another object. In other words, there is no user in the database. Okay, so um, dimension TMP uh, staff OBJ as a new library management system staff class. Okay, and then MP staff obj set employee login name I'm gonna say a okay and tmp staff obj dot set employee name abc and tmp staff obj set the password b so and finally tmp dot oops tmp staff obj dot save what insert it should be insert this is gonna be obj comma false and i'm not gonna check the re result of this uh, i just want to insert the information and i'm gonna assume it's gonna work well and then um uh, the result of that is i'm gonna try to log in with a and password is b okay so if this one works well this should works well if there's a problem here this will not work at all so I will still get the error okay so save that on the code and go all is working <coughs> so the login part now works okay and also the test is also working because we created that step by step now we finally reached the part where, where we are going to work on the graphical user interface. So uh, let me save this first. Okay. And uh, let me pause this for a second. <coughs> okay. So now we are going to work on the graphical user interface for the administrator. Okay. So we're going to have what? Uh, which which means uh, we're gonna create a project specifically for the administrator and the administrator should be uh, able to log in and do uh, some kind of operation um, let's have a look here okay so we can work on this in many ways we can create a separate project for the administrator and separate a project for other staff members or we could um, we could <coughs> I'm sorry uh, we could uh, create a single project for the administrator and the staff members so I'm gonna try to go with the second one so now let's go here uh, okay I'm gonna save this close 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 okay so all um, seems okay Let me close this okay so um, these are our two projects. We're gonna now add the um, other project, add new project. Okay, this is gonna be a Windows application, Windows form application. And, uh, whoops, browse that and let's go. Select folder. And this is gonna be what? Uh, this is gonna be. I'm gonna call it st staff GUI. Okay, or let me call this Win Windows client project. Okay, so that we distinguish what this does from its name. Okay, 
So hitting OK, so far so good. Uh, we're we're going to need to do a few things. So right click on this and go to Properties <coughs> and select Compile. Make sure to go to Advanced Options. Make sure it's x86. Okay, you don't want to have problems due to compilation and stuff like that. Okay, <coughs> so um, this is the first thing. Second, we want this to work, uh, to be the main project. So right click here, and we are going to say set as startup project, very simple. And also we're going to right click here and select add reference. And when we do that, wait a few seconds. Um, let's go to project. We're going to add the library management system uh, part, uh, which is the one that has all the database connectivity and stuff in there. So I'm going to hit OK. So for this, very easy. <coughs> OK. So let's go to the project again and select properties. I want to check a few things. Let's go to applications. Now we have startup project is a from what from sub main, okay? Uh, sorry, not main. It's, it's from this one, okay? So uh, yeah, okay. So now let's go back to this one, and I'm gonna rename this file. Sorry, I'm gonna call this mm, main window. And this is going to ask me if, if you want to change the names, uh, the class name and stuff like that. I, I did it, so no problem. Again, dit, dit, dit. okay, oops, okay, main window, sorry, uh, enable making single instance application and authentication mode windows when startup form closes okay so here this is going to ask you when you are going to shut down your application in this case we're going to change it to make it when last form closes okay um this is important so here um i'm gonna yeah we can do that which one to do which one to do? okay I'm, I'm gonna leave it as the default okay I'm gonna leave it as this so when sort of form closes okay no problem so um, <coughs> what should happen here uh, we're gonna create a user interface so this is gonna be adding a folder here this is gonna be graphical user interface there we go um, main window should go here obviously uh, first thing a user wants to see when he runs the, the project is a login screen. In this case, I'm going to right click here and select add. Uh, what should I do here? Uh, I should add a Windows form. Come on. Okay, and uh, Windows forms. And there are, there are a number of Windows forms here. So there's a login form, as you can see. And uh, I'm gonna call this logon form. Okay, I'm gonna hit add. Okay, so um, it already created something simple for you here, where you have a username, and this is called the username text box, and there's also a password, which is called a password text box, and we have an OK and cancel, and the cancel just closes the form, and uh, the OK also closes the form. Okay. <coughs> both are very simple to uh, to work with okay and uh, you can create this yourself now let's add this to our form okay so this is going to be what first this is going to be library management system okay this is the title of the form click here so um uh double click this one we're going to need to define a number of objects. Define the uh, DBM, DBMS object. 
Okay, and now to simplify things on ourselves, and we're gonna say import library management system. So public dbms as dbms class. Actually, this is gonna be a new dbms class. This function cutes when the form first appears. Okay. So first thing you want to do is to connect to the database. So what we are going to do, we are going to say dbms.openDB. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, and also, um, if you remember, uh, this is going to return a string. Okay. So if all is okay, we shouldn't get an error. So if this one equals uh, or doesn't equal okay then was it okay or what sorry i'm jumping here but uh, open db so if all is well we should get an okay there we go that's a great so uh when we get an okay here if we don't get an okay we're going to display a message box um enable of uh Enable of open or let's say error opening the database and then and db new line. Um, maybe I should keep this inside the string. Instead of TMP, I'm gonna use result. Result. And result. Followed by critical or OK. Followed by error. So if there's any kind of error where you are gonna get a message telling you what's happening, and finally, we're gonna say end to end this project. Now, we were able to open the database without any kind of problem. Now, what are we gonna do? Uh, <coughs> we are going to um, <coughs> uh, we are going to perform the login. Create login form. Dimension my login form as new login form. Okay, so what that means we have this login form. This is actually a class, and I'm gonna create an object or an instance of that class, and then I'm gonna say my login form dot show dialog. There we go. And now we are ready to try our login code. So dimension um, uh, dimension user info or let's say staff info equals um, this is going to be what? this is going to be staff class dot login this is the function which we created some time ago this is going to be what? this is going to be dbms followed by the my login form dot uh, username text box there we go dot text followed by my login form dot uh, user password what password text box dot text okay and if all is fine we shouldn't get nothing if staff info is nothing then this means we got an error so I'm gonna create a similar error here error or let's say here where, where are you come on I'm sorry this is gonna be invalid username or password why the user's capital okay so it's very simple um 
you are opening database connection uh, you are checking uh, reading the information from the form and uh, you are opening uh, or uh, trying to log in okay so here I am gonna say <coughs> define the staff object public staff object as staff class um, otherwise else staff object equal staff info well actually we don't need to do that we can right away say here staff object right away staff object okay so um, if all executes well uh, the main window will be displayed right away so I'm gonna run this but we don't have information in the database so run that you can see that this one got displayed so let's call this admin123 and and there is no such information in the database so we get an error okay so let's try to fix this um, we are gonna right click and show table data there we go and the employee login this is going to be admin the full name this is going to be administrator and the employee password is one two three okay and i'm going to save that close this um another thing that i noticed is that the form title is login form um i'm going to say here library management uh, this is not important but anyway management system login enter okay so we have this one here i'm gonna save this <coughs> on that and say admin one two three go and now you can see that we were able to uh, log into the system without any kind of problem very straightforward okay and also um, the final code we used is very small um, you can see here we are connecting to the database right away okay and uh, here we are checking the login information right we performed the login using single line of code we needed this one because we need to display user-friendly interface so all in all it's uh, much easier okay um, we're gonna need to do a few other things here so um, now for the administrator and to be able to do administration things uh, we need to display staff information okay so here uh, or let me check this please okay so admin logs into the system this one is done so we have administrator view all staff members so let's work on this it's gonna be easy um, where is it where is it let me see where the tab control is uh, T this tab control place one here and yeah it doesn't dock right away so let me put this one here now okay so we got this uh, after you set this one like that we are gonna go and make sure the anchor is on all sides so that when you resize the window it will all be okay and then can say remove tab okay so now you, you click inside so now you, you have selected the first tab page okay uh, by the way if you click here on the tab part you are selecting the tab control if you click inside uh, you will be selecting the tab page itself okay so here this is going to be what staff members there we go um, this is the first thing here and uh, what we want to do now is to display a menu uh, for all the available uh, staff members okay and not, not menu a table okay so for that we are gonna need what we are gonna need come on data grid view okay and this is gonna be our data grid view okay and uh, I don't want to enable it adding or editing or deleting okay so I'm gonna put these 
what about this one here? Let's assume that this is the full size. Okay, and I'm gonna call this data DGV to make it easier for us. And also the anchor, come on, come on, come on, where is it? The anchor is on all sides. <coughs> okay, so. Columns, cursor. Yeah, there are other properties we're gonna need to fill, but maybe later. So let me, let me go to the code now. I'm gonna save this now. And uh, as soon as the user logs in or the administrator logs in, all the staff members should be displayed in this one. So, how do you do that? Well, uh, it should be very easy, right? So, uh, and display all the staff information in the data grid view data grid view so how do you do that well all you have to do is this uh, we are going to say if, um, if not dbms dot full data grid view with data okay and uh, we're gonna pass DGV now uh, the SQL is gonna be select star from what Oops. what's the name of the table staff select stars st from staff that's it yeah so if this one returns false this means there's some kind of error so we're gonna display an error message okay Okay, so error displaying staff on formation. There we go. If any kind of error happens. So we're gonna save this now. And we're gonna run. Um, there's gonna be admin one two three go. Check this out. And we have our data grid here. We have the information and the table. Obviously, there are a number of things here that we need to address. First, uh, <coughs> the title here need to be replaced. You don't want to see the database table column name. You want to see a f more friendly name, right? And the password need to be invisible. So basically, this is column zero. This is column one. This is column two. So you could, uh, or or you could use the the name of the column. So now you could do this. You could say um, data grid view dot column columns of what? This is going to be columns of uh, employee password like that. Okay, dot visible equal false. So it will be there, but it will be invisible. You can save, save. Let's have a look again. So what we can do, admin123, go, and you can see now this one is invisible. So, uh, another thing here, here is that the, the title here, we are going to change it. <coughs> so how do we change that? Well, we could do it like that. DGV.columns of, there's going to be employee login name. Dot. Now this is going to be header text equals. Now we're going to change the header. Uh, this is going to be what uh, login name. Okay. Same goes for uh, phone name. DGP columns of what employee full name. Okay. Dot what uh, this is going to be dot. Uh, oops. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Full name dot text uh, header text equals uh, full name. That's it. And now we run this again. Admin one two three go. You can see here now um, that the names are more friendly. Now there is an an issue here. Uh, this is gonna be F employee name. Oops. Gosh, 
to play name. That's it. And that's gonna be what admin one two three go. Yeah. Now there is one issue here. You will find that whenever we try to follow information, we will have to make the password. Uh, you know, whenever we want to call this, we need to make the password invisible uh, and also set these values. Which means, which means basically, is that these operation should be executed all together. So one thing w that we could do is copy this code. I'm gonna cut it here and actually put it in this tab class. Okay, so here this is gonna be what this function is used to fill the uh, data grid view with staff info. Okay, so this is gonna be public shared function uh, full in staff info. <coughs> The grid view dbms of dbms class as boolean. There we go. And paste that. So now uh, what we can see here is that what's going to happen. We are going to pass these values. Uh, sorry, we're going to pass this here. If any kind of error happens, we are going to return false. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, DBA dot, oops. DBMS dot rollback return false. Okay. So this is going to be very simple. You can see now, since this one is a shared function, we can call it from anywhere and it's going to fold information for us. So if we go to our code, now uh, display all staff information. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna say uh, staff class dot full data grid view with the staff information dgv followed by what followed by uh, dbms. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna say if not if any kind of errors there, we're gonna say. error while displaying st displaying staff information information okay so you can see now the code is very small this let us try this now come on admin one two three go okay I did something wrong uh, let's have a look here So F11, let's go here, no problem, uh, DGV columns this one, oh I forgot to return the value true, return true, that's it, that's why it's, we're getting the error, okay. So all is working fine and you can see here that the information is being displayed correctly, very simple, very straightforward and one of the interesting things that uh, <coughs> we spend four tutorials just preparing and check what happened now you can see that opening the database now is done using a single line of code uh, performing login is done using single line of code following the data grid view is also done using single line of code very straightforward Later on when you want to update your code and later on when you w want to modify the graphical user interface everything will be very easy for you uh, to modify okay uh, the code will not be very messy and uh, not only that uh, you will see that the same functionalities that are available here in the library management system project will be available to any other project like the web project we are planning to use so once we create this or finish this library, you'll we'll find that the other uh, things will be, you know, almost trivial to, to do, okay? So, um, yeah, uh, this is what I wanted to say. 
Um, we need uh, to do a little bit of modification about the display here. The uh, thing is, is that we want to set the column width, right? So here, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Column. Is it visible? Uh, maybe it's in the allow user delete order rows, resize columns. Uh, to resize rows, anchor, auto size column mode. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna call, uh, sorry, I'll display cells. I'm gonna say full. Okay, what this does is gonna, um, well, you'll see. So, auto size column mode for data grid view. This is an interesting thing here. I'm gonna say here, there's gonna be admin, one, two, three, go. And you can see it just filled everything here very straightforward okay and also we're gonna do another thing here which is selection mode or selection mode da, 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 da. okay this is gonna be for row select and uh, by the way if you want to hide this pointer at the beginning admin, one, two, three, go. Yeah, if you want to hide this pointer you can you could do that Okay, so you can see now you can only select a four row, you, you can't select a single cell. Okay, <coughs> yeah, so um, this is it. Uh, um, okay, uh, this is how you, uh, you know, create the login. View staff members. Okay, um, let me stop the video and start again, and we're gonna do the add, edit, and remove staff member. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna also work on the add, edit, and remove a staff member. Okay. And this uh, should relatively be um, easy thing to do. So let's work with the add. Um, let's go here. Where are you, my friend? Oops. Let me close this. We already create the add method, so now we need only to create the graphical user interface. So right click and select add. Um, <coughs> and this is gonna be what? This is gonna be Windows form. Um, this is gonna be a dialog. Okay. And this is gonna be what? This is gonna be add staff uh, form. Okay. I'm gonna hit OK. There we go and uh, the title add new staff oops a new staff member there we go very straightforward um what we need to do next is uh, well we need to do, 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 do. uh we need a number of labels okay i'm gonna be lazy so I'm gonna copy these controls from here and I'm gonna paste them here. Okay. So this is gonna be what staff name. Uh, instead of the staff name, I'm gonna use gonna use this. I'm gonna say staff login name staff login name and let's copy this this is gonna be what the full name staff full name full name enter okay and finally we're gonna have the password okay so this is what this username text box. This is gonna staff full name uh, text box. First name staff full name text box. There we go. And finally we have the password. Okay. Usually you would want to create a confirm password as well. So copy that. Okay. Okay, there we go. <coughs> okay, these two guys need to be adjusted a little bit. Okay, and 
no they are correct okay so this is gonna be what go over here this is gonna be confirm confirm password there we go so this is for confirming the password you can see that most of the uh, we are wasting time on designing the interface now not code because most of the hard work is already done so the rest of our work is a little bit boring um, so we have these guys this this is what this is password sorry this password text box this is confirm password text box you can leave the names uh, as you like but anyway confirm password text box there we go and uh, finally da, 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 you want to put this here reason is oops unexpected okay it seems that da, 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 okay so you have this one now what happens when you hit cancel and you are gonna display a cancel okay what happens when you hit ok <coughs> perform validation there you go so um, if uh, username textbox.text.trim equals nothing then in this gbox you should enter a valid a valid staff login name and this is going to be what uh, I think uh, we could use alert is there an alert here uh, uh, first of all we're going to say ok only or application information there is information I think there was something ok um, this one ok ok warning or let's this is not an error but rather you know yeah I'm gonna call it an error but this is not a very important one and uh, then username text box dot focus and exit sub okay uh, next is check the staff full name f staff full name text box dot text dot trim equals nothing then uh, something very similar is gonna happen here Ctrl C Ctrl V you should enter a bad stuff full name full name this is gonna be what stuff full name text box there we go and uh, next we need to do what we need to check the password okay so if uh, uh, password text box dot text doesn't equal uh, confirm password text box dot text then again the password and its confirmation does not match there we go um, what we need to say is password textbox.focus and finally we need to do what? we need to check if uh, password textbox.text equals nothing then this means <coughs> you can't use you, you can't use an empty password so now if all is fine this means we are ready to the next step create the user or staff object dimension stobj as a new staff oh, oops as new what uh, what is it this is going to be library management system dot staff class stobj dot and now um, set employee login name uh, we are going to use uh, username text box dot text okay stobj 
dot set employee name uh, staff full name textbox dot text and stobj dot uh, set password this is going to be what um, password text box dot text there we go so we set the information insert information into the database so if stobj dot insert to db uh, wait a second yeah uh, insert to db uh, and now we need to use database management system now the database management system object is in the main window so we're going to say main window dot dbms there we go and we, are, we want to save the changes so we're going to say true in other words insert the information and save the changes in one step so then in that case we are going to return ok and close the window otherwise we are going to say there is some kind of error We're going to say enable of adding staff information. Okay, this is going to be critical, critical type of error. And uh, this is it for add the staff form. Um, I'm going to save this here. And now we need to put some code here. So for that, we're going to need to put a menu strip, right? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Menu strip, there we go. Okay, and here, um, um, <coughs> staff here, this is going to be add new staff number. There we go, and this is used to add a new staff member so dimension tmp as a new add staff form and tmp dot show dialog and that's it you don't need to do anything else you just show this form and the form is going to manage itself and insert the information so let's try this out save that and run <coughs> So here we have admin123 go. Uh, very simple. I'm going to say staff and new staff. Okay. There we go. We have, here we have Smith. Oops. You can see the tab order is messed up. So I need to fix that. This is going to be Jean. And password123. 123, 123, and hit OK. And there's a problem here, which is the display is not being updated. So we need to do that. Uh, if I run this again. You'll see the information is there now. Admin one, one two, three, go. Um, you can see. There we go. Right? No problem. So, um, I, I need to fix these things. And these are very easy, actually. And so, all we need to do is. Uh, what should we do? So, if this one works well equal uh, okay then wait a second so what did it return here so if all is fine we are gonna get okay so here if we are having okay in, the, in that case we are gonna say staff class dot full dgv dgv and dbms there we go just the first thing and go to the add stuff form this tab index is 0, next tab index is 1, next tab index is 2, and then followed by 3, this is 4, and finally this is going to be 5. There we go. And now I guess it should work well. And run, my friend. Go. Admin123, go. And now I'm going to say staff add a new staff member. Mm, I'm going to see insert key. 
Okay, um, uh, Todd. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hit OK. You can see that the information is displayed right away. Okay, so all is working fine now. Okay, there's another thing here. Uh, what's this one? Tab order four, I think. This one should have tab order of four. Uh, forgot this one. This should be four. Oh, okay, no problem. So save that. Okay. So if we have a look here, um, we were able to add a new staff member. <coughs> uh, editing a staff member. Um, this is gonna be an, an annoying one, I guess. And also, my time is up, so I'd have to work on this later on. But anyway, I guess we did a fairly good job today. We finished this from here to here. Okay, uh, which is fairly good amount of work, and uh, I think you have just noticed that how fast we started to move as soon as we finished this one uh, and this one. Uh, the rest, well, we we finished this step very quickly. We didn't have to do lots of work. Most of the work was already done in the classes we prepared in advance, and uh, all of our work now is just you know creating, putting few texts controls here making sure that text exists uh, or not and then um, calling the appropriate function that's it so um, I will be posting uh, the source code on the website mkasoft.com um, hope you'll find it useful if you have any questions send your questions to notes at mkasoft.com or notes at mka-soft.com uh, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.